Yeah. You got it. All right. Uh, call to order the meeting of the planning board for Tuesday, October 13th, 2015. Uh, is there anyone here to speak to something that is not on the agenda tonight? All right. Uh, planning board minutes from our September 22nd meeting. Everyone have a chance to look at them? Yep. Any uh, errors, omissions, corrections? I'd like to get a clarification if I could. Uh, it said that um, one of the tenants in the bottom of the first page uh, as to the 11 and 17 Highland Street properties in East Cary resident at 17 Highland Street previously stated that she'd like to see the properties on residential but explained that was due to a mistake in terminology. I wasn't quite clear on what that meant and I wondered if I could get a, an explanation. I believe it was that the resident had thought it was zoned business residential. General mm -hmm. business. General business. <coughs> a reference to business residential, some sort of combination that um, Thank you. All right, anybody have any changes or amendments? Right. In motion, we accept the minutes September 22nd. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Abstentions. All right. Um, moving on <coughs> to the uh, public hearing regarding the zoning map amendments. So I believe <coughs> that all we had left, uh, Jessica, was the Highland Street property. Uh, no, there was two issues. One two was issues. the Highland Ave issue, and then the other one was in regards to Mr. Gall's um, submission of paperwork. He was not at the last meeting, right? And so it was um, it was skipped until this hearing so that he could explain. Okay. So there are two. All right. You guys want to join us? In? Yeah. It's, uh, can I have a motion to open the public hearing? Motion. motion. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Motion to open the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we're good. All right. Um, I think we start with the issue of Mr. Gall's property. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Is there someone here to speak to that tonight? I guess I might. All right. I, I haven't uh, been at any of the previous meetings, so forgive me if I uh, skip over something that you know that I don't, or if I'm not as <coughs> clear as I might be. But uh, we are concerned about, uh, I guess what we're concerned about is what you are doing in terms of the new map. Are you uh, creating new design or are you just reaffirming in a more uh, clear way what the zoning is? I guess. Uh, it's kind of a little bit of both. There were, I think, about 10 or 12 areas where there were two <coughs> official maps that sort of disagreed with one another. So we've tried really hard to limit to just those areas where there were discrepancies and clarify where that boundary should have been, whether it's A or B, um, and not get into areas outside of those specific locations where there isn't a question on the official maps. Okay. And so well, that helps <coughs> some. So what I guess what we're interested in is what areas of the new map are going to be adjusting something and what are just clarifying what already exists? Um, well, there were several areas that we dealt with at the prior hearings. Um, I, I don't know if we have all the paperwork to go over the specific areas, but there was we could, but quite a bit of discussion about it. I think it's we've kind of covered all of that. We will be able to see sometime today uh, what you are going to do? Or it's behind um, the board. There's the, this is the most recently revised so iteration of the map. Okay, that's the new that's digital new. map at this point. Well, that's what the board has tentatively, yeah, tentatively so discussed. So this is the latest draft. Okay. But then the final version that we agree on here will go to the city council for approval. Okay, and we'll get to see what that is. Sure. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right. Yes, sir. Um, Dan Hagen from City Council. With regard to Mr. Gall's property, I thought when we started the process, um, uh, if I understood what Jessica said, we were only going to do areas 
that were in some type of conflict on the mapping, and I don't believe, uh, at least in the Highland area, area, both of the two 95 maps have Mr. Gall's property the same. So I don't know why Mr. Gall would, at this point, I mean, certainly down the road, uh, you know, anyone can go back for zone changes, but I don't see what the, why you would entertain um, any type of change now to his property. As I said, both of the maps, that isn't one of the circled areas. Um, you know, on, on that side, I mean, they're both the same on each each of the 295 maps. So um, I think that's a fair statement. I, I mean, I don't, I, I don't think he's making no, a I, I'm not saying right either. now. I yeah, I mean, I, I don't think that was an area where there was discrepancy based right. on our conversations with right. him. Months ago, when we first had this hearing, I think so. Um, anybody else to speak about that specific property or parcel? All right, I guess. So, we'll just for our clarification, so no, there's no changes saying as is. Right. Right. All right, I guess moving on to the, <clears throat> the Highland Street properties. Um, and I think just to sort of summarize, I think at the first meeting we had the residents there that were sort of in the flopped area, flipped area about whether they were business or highway business or R15, had mistakenly requested that it uh, re be residential and then they came to the last meeting and said they had misunderstood the terminology and requested that it be highway business and that that's what they had thought it was. Um, and we'd agreed, I think, because there was some perhaps misunderstanding about the status of the decision, tentative decision at the first meeting to continue it to today to see if there was uh, other comments or information that people might have that they thought was relevant. And here we are. Um, so I guess the residents are here, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're still consistent, you still want to stay at, as a highway business, so that's yeah. what you believe that it should be? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Is there anybody else who would like to speak on this issue? Yes, sir. Uh, I provided a, a, do a document for both chairs of o ordinance and planning, and again, uh, you, know, you know, I hate when two sets of constituents are kind of in conflict with each other, and, uh, but it's not really what the homeowners want, and it's not really what the butters one is really what the the evidence says and or the preponderance of the evidence and I tried to go back and, and I thank Jessica because Jessica did a lot of this research uh, also uh, and I, we she went all the way back to 1901 where you see a map which those were all um, small residential lots 50 feet a piece which uh, I guess it was at one point um, the plan for hundreds of uh, small lots and homes uh, <laughs> on both sides of, of Highland Avenue. Um, so that was obviously residential then. Uh, you move up to the um, 1947 and you still have at least the area of Mr. Um, uh, where Mr. Stevens' house is was owned by Mr. Gazda. Well, Mr. Gazda actually built it in 1955 and this is a 47 map so it was before that. But those were 50 foot lots also except for the end where that was East Hampton for the ones that haven't been here for years, that was East Hampton Chevrolet, where East Hampton Tire is. The showroom is where the tire shop is, and where Papa George was is where they used to store their vehicles, um, much like Cernak stores the new vehicles away from the showroom. So moving on up to 1983, that's when Mr. Dion buys Mr. Gazda's property, um, which included both the area where Mr. Stevens' house is and where uh, Miss Carey's house is. Uh, he owned he owned both, um, but I think the telling thing is in 1986, Mr. Dion divides the lots, and he has to because, and I got this from Jessica, he was meeting the dimensional standards of R15 when he divided them. He had to get a hundred frontage, so he made a somewhat of a flag lot from Mr. Gazda's, and he had to get 100 frontage and 15,000 square feet, which is consistent with our 15, and he does that in 1986. And this is when uh, Miss Carey builds her house. So to me, it's very clear that it was obviously our 15 then. Now moving up to today, or 1995, um, uh, the two maps obviously are equal. They're both said, uh, um, they're both official. 
One obviously has, they're both hand drawn, which is kind of uh, not probably the best that you uh, would want. Uh, but uh, there's <coughs> nothing really that differentiates the two other than the hand drawing, except for the fact that if it wasn't, if it was actually in highway business, or back then it was called, there was never any residential business. It was either general <coughs> business, downtown business, neighborhood business, highway business. There was never any business residential. I know Mrs. Carey, somebody told her that. I, I truly believe that's what she heard. But back in 95, Mrs. Carey actually put in a swimming pool, which if it was in her lap, was in highway business, it would have never been allowed because she would have a um, non-conforming structure within the highway business. They wouldn't have allowed a swimming pool to go in. You can't put a swimming, unless you're teddy bear pools and are running a business, I don't believe you'd be allowed to have an above ground pool in highway business. So that's 95. And then as you can see today, the final sheet is today, the uh, cards from the assessor's office in both Mr. Stevens house and Miss Carey's house are, are 15s old. It's uh, right on the current uh, thing and there's nothing Again, there's nothing that uh, they've presented other than that one hand-drawn map to me that's shown where there was ever a planning board, I mean, uh, planning board, <coughs> town meeting decision, city council decision, select person decision back when we had select boards. So again, I don't think there's any facts that, that sus or support the thing that it was ever business. Uh, obviously, if a business went in someday, they, they have the opportunity to come back and, and ask for a, a zone change. And someone did mention the map behind you, which is the same company that we've hired to uh, complete this. And I believe if you look at that map, they don't have those two homes in. Well, that's what we said at the first. No, meeting. no, I'm just it's saying based on what we decided at that first. Right, meeting, I'm just saying they don't have that yeah. in there either. So again, and I don't believe Jessica's map by her desk, which she uses, has them in there either. I know I was in her office and we were looking. So, and again, at this point, I'll sit down and. Can I summarize and just say that you're saying R15 is what it has been and should be? I think everything I see is it was R15 or residential zoning, and I've never seen any other documentation other than that hand-drawn map, which is equal to the other, where it's ever been anything other than residential zoning, including today R15. Anybody else have anything to say about this? Comments? Yes? Um, all I can, can you say just state your name and address again for us? Denise Carey, 17 Highland Avenue. And um, when <clears throat> we purchased the property, I, like I stated before last time, um, I really didn't know what all the zonings meant. I don't know what R15 to this day means. Um, just a regular homeowner. Um, I, after the first meeting, <coughs> I went back and I was looking at all the zonings. When we purchased, we were told, you could have a business in your basement if you wanted to. Um, you're zoned for both. Now, I, he happened to say, I believe, business residential. Obviously, there never was anything business residential now that I was looking at them. But we were, all these years, under the assumption that we could have either or, or both, or whatever. Um, and as far as us putting in a pool, I think the town maps were kind of, the town was kind of confused at that point, too. So they gave us the go ahead to put a pool in, but I I don't think, looking at the map, they had us one way, they had us another way. I don't think the town really knew what it was either, but we got the permit to put the pool in. Um, we just kind of wanted it to stay what we always thought it was. Is there somebody else back there? Yeah. I included your 16 Island Avenue right across the street from their property. Now, what is that going to do to my property? Is that going to be doesn't change anything it's just those parcels that, that we're discussing it, 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 and it's off the uh, <coughs> not even on the main highway it's on the dead-end street so you believe it should be residential r15 residential okay. anybody else have anything anybody have any questions comments up here thoughts I think at the last meeting, <clears throat> I was certainly open to considering what the residents had wanted it to be, and uh, the question that I had 
raised was just making sure they were clear at the time that it could affect their property values if they uh, went back to residential. But after seeing this additional information going back to you know, 1901 and, and everything else, I mean, it really does appear that the city has always considered it residential. The question was really the, the two hand-drawn maps and which one was correct. And uh, based on this, it certainly does appear that it's residential. I concur. I can do. Yeah. Harry, any thoughts? <coughs> yeah, sort of. <coughs> Uh, the people that you bought that house from, or you built the house from that piece of property, uh, who told you it was, was uh, his own business? Was, um, it, was it a lawyer to sell it or a real estate agent, or who was it? The guy that built it. Does anybody know who that was? Ron Lauren. And what, what did he base his facts on? Did he just tell you that at yeah. uh, the yeah. top of his head? or? We were just chatting, and that's what he said. Jim Stevens, I own a lot of Highland Avenue. I, I really don't see what it matters because neither Denise or I are planning on selling. And if it is own highway business and someone wanted to put an addition on a house or something, they would have to come back to this committee and get it changed to residential. Right? But being highway business, that keeps our options open. You know, who knows what make them down the pike in five years or ten years? You know, so I, I prefer to be highway business because it, it would be easier to change it back to residential than it would be for residential highway business. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Yeah, Ken Bushy, uh, 43 Highland. <coughs> um, if it's highway business, they basically could open up, um, say, do automotive work in their yard. That would be a, an allowable business at this point. Say they decide to put up a garage or do stuff, and they say, well, we're going to run, I'm going to fix cars or lawnmowers. As a highway business, they could do that. I mean, if, if their property is owned highway business, they can use it for any of the uses that are if it's residential, you can't. It's a different set of uses, so yeah. It's <clears throat> obviously the, the business uses are much right. smaller. What, yeah. What, Hold on, let's see. Yeah, no, keep going, Mr. Richard. Oh, uh, what would be considered a business that could be run? I'm a small business owner myself. I do prom animal control, and it's based out of my house, but I really don't do any business there. I'm not bringing cars in to fix, I'm not making any noise, I'm not disrupting anybody, it's, I go out uh, off site to do my work. So if it's <coughs> business district, it would be, they, they could basically run any kind of business in, up to and including something that say could be noisy to the neighbors. And, well yeah, I mean it's much more permissive for the okay. businesses you can run in a highway business district versus what you could do as a home occupation yeah. resident. Okay, I'm just looking yeah. for some clarity on that. But you yeah. couldn't Thanks. have a highway business intense project with somebody living in that house. Right. There's a there's there's home occupation, which is one section of the zoning, which allows somebody to live in their house and then have some some small businesses. But if it was zoned highway business, it could it could then therefore not be a residential use and be higher intense commercial uses. Do you understand the difference? Just want to make so sure. They could like knock the house down and put up a store. Right. Yeah. Yes. And have more significant <laughs> business going on there than if you're just running a home occupation. Right. right. More like you described, sort of low impact on yeah. the community kind of stuff. Say so they could, at some point, run a business <coughs> that could bring traffic in. And, mm -hmm. Okay. I just uh, pointed, it's a little of what Jessica said, and I know Salem, we just changed the home occupancy business and made it larger, and that was one of Ms. Carey's uh, concerns of running a business out of her home, as long as it met those home occupancy. I believe it's now, what, 20, 
25 percent in Salem or, uh, or more 33 percent went from 25 to 33 yeah. so you could actually use 33 percent of that home for a home business as long as it's a home business within the thing I mean that's allowed keeping now it as our and keeping yeah. it as our 15. Keeping it as our 15. Mm -hmm. I definitely feel our role is to try and uncover this and, and sleuth this out more than I really want everyone to be happy in East Hampton I do but even though it might be a case where I feel like we could change it for you, I don't think that's our role. That's my take. It's not appropriate. Ours is to find out what the history was and correct the maps to be to the history. I think to change it would be to come in independently. <clears throat> that's my view. Anyway. Mm. Just one other point. Yes. My wife runs a business out of the house now. So we've claimed that on our taxes for the last... <coughs> 15 years probably. And I'll bet you none of the neighbors even know that she has a business going on. Mm -hmm. yeah. She runs a business out of there. Yeah. That's what we were talking about, home occupations. You can have a business within your home and actually it used to be 25% now up to 33% of the living space in the home can be used for the business and claimed on your taxes. But there are uh, limitations on what you can do in that uh, occupation, and I'm actually I just passed back the the new regulations, the new ordinances on that. All the way in the back, did I see a hand there? Oh, just hanging Highland down. I just wanted to say we all know that she has a business, but it's it's house cleaning, so it's not done on on site. There's no noise or anything. Gotcha. Anybody, anything else? Are we ready for a motion of some sort or? A motion that it be R15 for both properties. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Joe Harry? Aye. Aye. Those <coughs> five? Yes. <coughs> Uh, do we need to do like a catch-all motion now at this point since we've sort of done all the parts or yeah so mm -hmm. can I get a motion for the entire revised zoning map as we've done it or you guys you guys should vote first time? Uh, I don't know or if you need to vote on individual, individual pieces. pieces. I think yeah, we, we just wait for your... We haven't done that in the past. Can, can yeah. we get to see that before? We, we just want to see where the line is drawn. It's on the wall. The, the line is... You can pull it off the wall. Yeah. Is it is this one still relatively current? Uh, <coughs> Except no, if you take no. out those two. Oh, that one. Because if you take out these two, yeah. 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 Yeah.
street. I mean, my position on this was that it wasn't an area where the, the maps disagreed with one another, which doesn't mean it can't be changed. I mean, if yeah. other board members feel differently. Yeah, we'd like to point out that the 300 feet is clearly on your map here. Uh, you can see what I'm talking about. These two lots are on Mr. Gall's property, and the way we measure the line out from the midline of this street is it would go to that line at least. This one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how we measure it out, and with the materials supplied by Mr. Gall, there was a uh, uh, petition that was allowed, as we understand it, giving a uh, meets and bounds description. Uh, I just want to clarify what's yeah. in this packet. Yeah. So, um, sorry, everybody, we're in, like sardines today. The school committee <coughs> wasn't needing to be upstairs. Um, so, in addition to what he submitted. I went and I looked and it had reference to assessor's plan 1967 sheet 29 which I was able to go back in the old files and find. And so this is a photocopy <coughs> of those parcels. The parcels that are included are highlighted in blue. So I don't know how that matches up with whatever you're pointing out over there, but the numbers that have been circled are the parcels that were included in this town meeting vote of 1981. Where's where's time to have a problem probably there. Mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah, those, we're feeling that uh, general business would include really well. Uh, this one. Yeah. But it only listed designated as parcels 129, 130, 131, 132, and 132A thereupon, containing approximately 725,000 square feet or more or less, of which parcel mm -hmm. is more particularly bounded and described as follows. And then beginning at a point which is 300 feet east of said northwesterly side right. of Northampton Street. Yeah. But in, in, in my interpretation, if it's not including those parcels that are referenced in the town meeting vote, I'm not sure what else it's yeah. supposed so to be including. I think the problem I'm having trouble with is uh, if the meet and bounds description says uh, 450 feet in length on two parallel sides, and then uh, uh, 300 <coughs> feet east from the center throughout the, to the whole length, which would come up to here. And that's why we're thinking that one lot should be included in the general business. I recognize it does not say in the reference to the uh, lots on Assessor's Plan 1967, it does not refer to number 109, apparently, nor does it refer to number 108 and, uh, or 107, which seems peculiar to me, given the uh, map that was supplied as well. <coughs> so it looks like somebody had hand-drawn in a, uh, well, that's this line is supposed to be hand drawn in, which is okay because our lot is within the white area, not the uh, area in back, but we are within the white area, right up to the end of that. So, my concern is that along Highland Lake Ave, 300 feet up should be included. Did you include the 300 feet here on the other side of Highland Ground? I think that's the old 85 map, and if you I go mean, and you look at the yeah. more recent versions of yeah. the map, I think it was extended out. Yeah. See. see, you see a line that says 300 feet this way, it says 500 feet this way, and 800 feet down here. Yeah. So this is showing that the 300 plus the 500 together were incorporated, with the line stopping at about here, similar to this assessor's mm -hmm. map from 1967. Yeah. I think the, the problem was, that I think both of these are in agreement on that, so it's not sort of the scope of our process right now. Um, I think it, you know, there may be another way that you can clarify that or change it if it needs to be changed mm -hmm. or what have you, but I think that that's sort of we've kind of limited ourselves to just these areas where the official maps did not agree with one another. Okay, so you're saying that these maps are consistent, thank you, 
that these maps are consistent, saying that. Uh, well, this is a discrepancy right here. Yeah. Here. yeah. Okay. Okay. And so you're saying these look consistent to you, and I'm suggesting that. No, we're saying this is an inconsistency. That's why they're, oh, okay. they're circled. All right. <clears throat> it is an inconsistency. Okay. And you're selecting one over the other. Okay. Well, we think, we, All right. We think that that's uh, missing out on the meets uh, and bounds description, which I think should be important. Okay. Um, Thank you. All right. Are we ready for a final motion? I uh, motion to uh, approve the zoning amendments according to the latest draft. Plus not. Second. Mm -hmm. In including the changes that changes. we've noted today. Including the yeah. Including the changes. Okay. Let's go. Do you need me to re-say re that? Please. Okay. <laughs> I approve. I motion to approve the zoning amendments according to the latest draft and including the changes made today. Second. Two seconds. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? I abstain. You don't need to do anything? Okay. All right. I guess that's it. <laughs> Thank you all. Can I have a motion to close the time? Motion to adjourn. Motion. Yep. See you all. See you now. Tomorrow. Tomorrow we have a committee. Yes. Yes. We can. Yes. I mean, depends. Usually we don't vote until we get a committee. Now that we know what the recommendation is. All right, folks, we have another item on the agenda, so if you're not sticking around for that, you can step out. That would be great. Okay. So, so much fun, I'll spit. Yeah, no, right. Uh, so, uh, I know his name. It's, um, oh my god, help me. Jess, Nate, Nate. 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 Thank you. All right. All right. Uh, <laughs> good night. Thank you. All right, next up, uh, there's a request from the City Council Public yeah. Safety Subcommittee regarding the Paul Street extension. Jessica, do you want to give us a little? So, um, I know that it's been under council review for a while for accepting as a public way. Um, a little back history, just to refresh your memory, is that we, based on the city engineer, he went out and he did an inspection and we released the remaining lots that he had under covenant um, in November of 2014. And the memo from Jim Gracia, the city engineer, said in regard to the proposed release of the covenant for the remaining lots and the extension of Paul Street, I have no objections to re the release of the remaining lots. Now that the final course of paving has been successfully completed, there may be minor items left to be done before the street is formally accepted by city council. However, the majority utility and roadway construction has been satisf satisfactorily completed. You can leave that door open. That's fine. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, so the planning board released the lots um, so in terms of the planning board they basically said we're okay with the project um, based on the city engineers comments so then it went forth to a public um, way acceptance and I believe that the planning board considered the request in November 2014 and upon review of the special permit approval and defendant subdivision approval that you voted found that the conditions listed in the decisions were met to your satisfaction and voted 3-0 to recommend to be accepted as a public way. So, um, however, the council does not seem to be completely satisfied with the status of the road 
and it looks like the city engineer has kind of changed his mind as well. Um, and so I guess that leaves it to, you know, Councillor Hayes basically wanted the planning board, she sent it back to, for planning board. And, and in my opinion, I'm not sure what the planning board has any teeth to do anything since you've already released all of the lots. Right. So, um, as I said to Councillor Hagen before the meeting, I'm willing to sort of be the intermediary between the developer and the city if needed, if we, there are certain things that we need him to do. And I can convey that information to him saying, look, the council's not going to accept this as a public way until you get all of these last items checked off and completed. Right. And um, that's where the teeth are. And that's where the <coughs> teeth are at this point. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we can take those lots back now. No, we cannot take the lots back. Sort of, um, um, is that a, uh, Councilor Hagen? I, I just, you know, again, I can't speak for uh, Chairwoman Hayes because it's, you know, her, she chairs the committee, but I think uh, her rationale, at least as I understood it at our meeting, was to send it back to the planning board really for clarification of what some of the decisions were, such as the okay. lamppost. Did, was there a specific type of lamppost the planning board had wanted? Uh, I don't know if any of you have been up there for a while. It's kind of like almost like a tall version of what you put on your driveway. It's like a colonial. It's not like a street light. Mm -hmm. So this would be like an unofficial response to the city council so then they can use that to basically... Yes, I think that's what we went in. We certainly have no problem, at least I have no problem, and I don't think the other committee members, I think I can speak for them, have no problem with, with Jessica being the conduit between the developer okay. and the city council to get some of these things. Another thing is like the cul-de-sac, there's nothing, we don't know, it's all overgrown now. Is that going to be... Uh, it says maintained here, by the city. The, the city of East Hampton mm -hmm. is not responsible for the long-term right. maintenance of the island in the center of the cul-de-sac. In accordance with the subdivision rules and regulations, the developer, its successors, and the signs or homeowner association will accept this responsibility. Right, and that was our question. In other words, who, in your decision, was 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 the developer saying he's going to take it? Because we mean, don't want to accept right. it. Because you know, once we accept it, we kind of so the problem we kind of own it. Or it'll just be overgrown. And, and the problem with this too is that I, perhaps these two gentlemen were here, but I mean, the decision everybody. is the decision, and so. I mean, we can't really interpret what the planning board had in mind at that time. I mean, Unless it got written down in the right, decision, that's why these right, that's why the, to be done the written correctly. decisions govern. And so, right. I mean, I, I, we mm -hmm. certainly don't have the ability to look at it now and say, you know what, I think that street lamp's ugly and we want a better one. Better right. right, so um, I think we're sort of stuck with whatever is in the decision. Well, you guys, it says the street light shall be located at the end of the cul-de-sac. The street light shall be owned by the city. The developer will either purchase and install the lights and turn them over to the city during street acceptance or determine the cost of the lights and forward a check to the city for the purchase of the lights. So we could have, the city could have purchased the light ourselves, <coughs> we, <coughs> we didn't right. like what he picked out. Yeah. Right. So, um, I mean, I so might have to, I might I have assume, to touch base with Jim Gratia and figure out if he can remember some of this stuff. But I assume that decision... The, the subcommittee has that decision, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. Everything. So I mean, I think that's the only. That's the. That's the only ruling. That's why I've been working on getting better written decisions now, so that we can <laughs> have something vague. to go back at, right? And, and it's vague and it's hard to. But I mean, Jim is right. I mean, the teeth now is that you guys don't have to release the public way, but I don't think we can do anything. I don't think we can clarify or hold only their feet to the have, fire. We absolutely can't. I, but I think if if. I mean, what she wants is, do you remember anything that we can use? To, <laughs> and that's really the question is, do we remember anything from that that's helpful? Uh, yeah, but even things you may remember, if they're not in the written decision, I mean, you don't know that no. that was part of what was voted on. And she yeah. can't use yeah. it officially, is right. what you're saying. You can't yeah. rely on it. So, yeah. I mean, it's dangerous territory. I'm, we have a, oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm just concerned about how this happened. Is this something that the conditions were, like, some of this stuff wasn't done at the time that we released the lots and then it wasn't completed to the city engineer's satisfaction or is my understanding is our decision was based on the city engineers right. yeah. and he it put off on it so what would say in the in the in the future i think a better process would be for the planning board to do a site visit yeah. right before yeah. it, yeah. not just taking the city engineer's word that everything is up is is up to to uh, par, yeah. to actually go out there, and even if you weren't a member of the board at the time of the decision, at least you can work down the list of the decision and say, yeah, this looks okay, this doesn't look okay, and I think that's where we have failed as a as a committee in in this. Um, not that we have any this is like the we have right now, but um, it's good to learn from this. But I think to, as a learning experience, that this should be sort yeah. of more ingrained into the process that the planning board actually goes out there and makes a site visit. Agreed. I can just add it. It was the subcommittee went out with the city engineer on a site visit, and that's when we asked 
Jim, you know, like, well, what about this? What about this? And right. kind of, again, like he just gave you guys kind of a blanket. It's good. And then right. when you started asking specifics, he wasn't quite as right. sure. So, again, I have no problem. We have a meeting later this week of going back if it's okay with the board and just saying that your decision is what it says, and but you're more than willing to have the planner if she can find any more information or um, any more yeah. documentation to bring it forward to the subcommittee sure. and we'll just have to make a decision or yeah. you know, maybe she can work with the, the so building. The only thing I can think of is with to go building. back into the minutes and see right. if there was anything about a, a land And, and you can work between right. Jen and yourself, work with the sure. builder and, and see if we can't come with some resolution. You know, obviously we'd like to get it to right. approved. Well, what is the, there was a comment in, in her response back to us that the quality of the work wasn't well, I think a lot of it is, in other words, like uh, I think one of the exemptions the planning board gave was no granite curbing. This is just an example. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we put the, the macadam berm in. Well, now that he's had his construction, a lot of it's broken. kind of broken down and cracked yeah. and stuff. Now, is he going to, you get what I'm saying? Is he going to, again, you didn't say you have that granite, but he's got to have the macadam, and we don't really want to accept it. And then our DPW is down there six months later fixing the berm. If, right. When we take it, we want the berm fixed. So. Uh, I think those were some of the questions about the quality of the work. And then there were some questions about where the open space was he was supposed to, and that's piles of stuff is still there, and there's supposed to be a walkway in with a sign saying this is the Spasonic. Pascomic. 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 I always get that. <laughs> Pascomic. Trust to, um, you know, en uh, entrance. Oh, so that, the path, yeah. Right, I mean, so that people would have a pathway to get to the open space. That was part of the reason, I guess, for the way the, it was. The other thing is that, I mean, not all the houses have been built. And, yes, you know, exactly. and so, and, you know, I guess this goes, this is more of a bigger picture is, should the city only be recommending public street acceptance of ways once every house is built? Because it is an active construction site, so that's that's why there's piles of right. dirt in certain locations. And that's because not all, I think maybe half the lots have been sold mm -hmm. and built on, and the other half are still, um, you know, for sale. So it's going to be an active construction site until every single last house is, is built. And the Conservation Commission, that was one of our questions, cannot release that order of conditions until all of the houses that have wetlands jurisdictions have been built on. Now, they, not all of them have been, and not all of them have been sold. So that permit is going to stay open until until those houses are, are built or those lots are sold. So you know, they that's don't have to, they don't have to come back before us at all anymore in this project, right? I no. Mean, uh, once we release those lots. No, conservation, you, know, you have to close out the permit. So. Right. See, I think that's what's driving, and we're trying to do a whole new street acceptance protocol right. through right. the city council because, you know, there's been some state decisions through the inspector general that the city shouldn't be plowing these streets, it's right. that the contractor should, and we plow a lot of private ways, and there's some of them uh, that are 14 years in the making of uh, right. yeah. the so city's been maintaining expensive. them, and they still haven't been approved because they haven't met the standards. Right. So I think we're trying to get that where well, there's, I think it's good to there's some teeth. It. Some yeah. teeth to, to motivate the, the contractors also. And those asphalt curbing, they only last one season. Right, because once the plow hits them. Right, yeah. once the plow hits them, they're toast. That's why yeah. grit, That's why we like That's why you like the grit, yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, maybe there's, right. I don't know if there's, you know, as part of the discussion, then dialogue back and forth, but telling him, you know, he's got to replace all of this curb and it's got to be back to standard before the city will accept it again. And, you know, I don't know what that document is that would, you know, if there's an agreement or if you just want to hold off and sit on it until... Okay. So, I mean, if he fixes this and then you, and then you plow next year, it's going to get broken again. Exactly. Right. So, but I certainly I appreciate it, and I'll report back to. Yeah, I wish we could do more. Council Hayes on the explanation and on the holding the feet to the fire, right. but I think we're kind of out of the loop now. You're and we're, we're bound just, by what's been decided. We're just a written decision at this point, right. yeah, for well, better well. or worse. Right. I hear you. But I think he wanted those lots released so that he could sell them. I think right. that's really, you know, he was. Well, and that's obviously the trade-off, right, to requiring that all the lots be built and sold before you approve a public way, is I'm sure right. it makes projects easier when a developer can right. sell them as they're going to fund right. the rest of the project. So, right. Right. obviously those cut both ways, but right. that's where we are now, so okay. I guess we'll just all right. eyes open going forward. All right. All right. Thank, all right. thank you very much. Thank you. Site thank visits. you for staying. Yeah, thanks. Okay. More site visits. Administrative items? Um, just a couple. Um, so... Reminder that the CPTC fall workshop schedule is out. Um, I know there was one in Northampton last week on site plan approval. I think the rest of them are farther away, but mm -hmm. um, you know, take those if you can. Um, I do want to talk about the meeting schedule for 2016. We had had some discussions in the past about 
having um, setting up the schedule so that we would be able to use the bigger room upstairs if we need to. What I'd like to propose is that we move our meetings to the first and third Tuesdays of every month. That way we're not conflicting with the school committee. And that way, if we ever need the large room upstairs, it's likely to be available because um, like tonight, we could have used the large room. It would have been way more yeah. comfortable. Yeah. But the school committee was meeting, so we couldn't. I'm going to have the same problem next meeting. Um, we've got three permits on the agenda. It's going to be a packed shack, and I'm trying to switch with the school committee to see whether I can get the upstairs room because it's going to be a humdinger. So, so for yes. we need <laughs> so we need to talk about the 27th in a minute. But so I'd like to propose that we meet the first and third Tuesdays. I know it's like going against what the planning board has done for like we do second and fourth years. now. We do second and fourth. Yeah. And then that way, if it's just a couple of small administrative items and we don't think we're going to have a big crowd, we can be down here. But if we feel like we need the big room upstairs because we think we're going to have a crowd, we can use the room. And both rooms would be available if we switched it yeah. to the first and third. But that gives us the opportunity of having a room. Does anybody right. have a problem with I that? I do. You no. do? Yeah, yeah, it's a big problem. Oh, okay. Um, so I, I, love, I love everything so you just said, except for I think it would be best to keep that as the standard and then have it, like you said, if we needed something small to hide here. But the standard of the meeting should be up there and set the tone of okay. not we're going to take that meeting this time because we need it, but that's where we meet. Okay. And we'll take this only if we need some you know, smaller, more intimate setting. I think the standard should be that the planning board meets up there. That's my comment on it. Yeah. I don't have a problem with that. I mean, I think it lends itself to a more sort of professional okay. setting and okay. makes people take it a little more seriously. I think if it's available. Okay. But the first period. and thirds generally work with everybody sitting here. There's no other conflicts for days. This will be starting in January? I was going to say starting in January because I have to start putting the 2016 calendar together for the permits coming in for the end of the year. First and um, third. So uh, that was. I just think it makes it it's awesome. A few months, That's months great. lead time. I think a few we can months all lead time. Change our schedules. And, um, <laughs> change Do we require a motion? Uh, you know, I no, don't think so. It's just, <laughs> just an yeah. administrative thing. But okay, I didn't before I started putting together that 2016 calendar. I just wanted to run it by, and then it will be upstairs as the standard. That makes me happy. Thank yes, you. Yes. Thank you for figuring that out. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing is we need to talk about quorum check for next week. We have uh, have um, if you need hard copies, please stay after the meeting, and I will provide you with hard co copies of the of the permits. We've got um, two site plan approvals. Um, one for a um, downtown location on Union Street. We have a site plan approval for a, a, a new gym at the Highway Business District, right next to Nikki D's. The new, um, just that building that got revamped that was sold. Old it was auto Auto sales. Yep. Yeah, AMB and Auto got sold and got revamped. Um, that's a site plan approval. And then Fort Hill Brewery has submitted an application for their special permit. Jesse needs to recuse himself from that decision since his law firm is representing the applicant. So. I absolutely need to have four people for yeah. that meeting, and um, I hear Which rumors that? that the 27th, and I hear that you're maybe traveling, Chet, and you may be not available. No, I think cancel all plans, Chet. <laughs> That's a big it one. Takes Chet. priority. Take the one for the team. Is, the big one is where I'm going. <laughs> Are you going to be gone? No, I'll be back. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Because there's here. Jim, I mean, there's also Jim Valancourt. That's why he's an associate. I haven't, right. He's not here, so I haven't checked. No, because my wife had changed the day that we were going to start coming back, so that gives us a day earlier. Okay. I think we should notify Jim to try and be there regardless. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I'll make sure. Um, uh, just in case. And, and, and I will be, there. I mean, I can do, I haven't seen the, the applicants, first. but I believe I can be there for the other You can be there approvals. for the first yeah. two, yeah. and then you would probably, and that, I, I set it up in that order um, for a reason, so that Jesse could essentially leave and you wouldn't have to stay for the third one um so you know okay we'll get we'll have you already sent out all the information we need about the fort hill thing or i haven't sent anything okay. no no i haven't sent anything i just processed everything last week i was not in the office today so um i just processed it all on thursday last week okay and the legal ad for it just ran today the first legal ad ran today in the paper Okay. So, um, there was an editorial in the paper today about it. There was, uh, there was, there was, there's, there's, been, a there was one. there's been a ton yeah. of press. Yeah. yeah Did you, were you at the meeting? Press. Did you go to the meeting? The that will be an upstairs meeting room. So I'm trying to switch it around so we'll be upstairs. Watch. Okay. Mm. okay. I'll, tell you, I'll, tell you what, I'll tell you what's really tough is sitting at a meeting like that. 
And in order to approve, right. and let's, you're sitting there listening to this, let's, let's, you know, let's wait. Let's wait. Let, let's, and it really is disturbing. You, seriously, let's wait, wait, and we'll do it at the public hearing in two yeah. weeks. The public hearing will take care of that. All right. Can I get a motion to adjourn? You got it. And I will second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? All right. Thank you all.